The Triumph Bonnevilles of the Royal Enfield Interceptor It's been a long time since I've seen two bikes more hotly debated. The internet is awash with fans of both brands furiously commentating which bike is best. So in this video I'm going to dispel the myths. Now I spent some time riding bikes of both brands, I've ridden the Interceptor Euro 4 and the Euro 5 and I own a Euro 4 T120. I also spent time on the T100 and for that matter the Street Twin and the Speed Twin. I also own a Bullet. But for the purpose of this comparison I'm going to compare the Royal Enfield Interceptor with that of the Triumph Bonnevilles T100 and T120. But, as always, I will give my honest opinion and thoughts on these bikes. I will not, I repeat, not be swayed by brand royalty towards either brand. Firstly, I'm going to be honest, I cannot understand why there's so much bias and often venomous comments made by supporters of each brand. And the reason I say that is because both brands' bikes are completely different, both in power, weight and even pricing. Now I believe there's room in our hearts for both brands. You see, the only thing they share in common is styling and appeal to the fans of modern classic motorcycles. And, spoiler alert again, I'm going to be honest, they are fantastic bikes. There is no need for this ego and brand loyalty chest pounding nonsense because they are different bikes. They appeal to different riders who want different things from different bikes they ride. So let me explain. Firstly styling it's where they all have common ground. The T120, the T100 and the Interceptor are styled on modern classics with a 60s twist. And then they all have strong brand heritage. And I think they all look fantastic. So build quality and reliability, well Triumph's build quality is now right at the top with the best. The fit and finish in many cases surpasses Japanese standards while the quality of parts used in manufacture is excellent. Royal Enfield in the meanwhile have really upped their game. The Euro 5 bikes show a big improvement. Since 2019 the constant drive for quality improvement is evident right across the range of bikes Royal Enfield produce. In fact, I only have to compare my 2019 Bullet with a 2022 Classic 350 to see the vast improvement in engineering quality. The Interceptor quality of construction is excellent. Ok, I have to be honest, Triumph do have a quality advantage in some of the parts that they use. For example, clocks and switch gear. General visibility parts used, like mud guards and lighting and indicators etc. But to be honest, it's not a massive difference, and it's certainly not a showstopper. Triumph is, after all, a premium brand, so it's what you'd expect. Now, engineering-wise, there are huge differences. In fact, the only similarity of the Interceptor, the T100 and the T120 have is they are twin cylinders. Mechanically, they are very different engines and capacities, the Interceptor being obviously the 650 with 47 brake horsepower, and the T100 being a 900cc with 64 brake horsepower and the T120 being a 1200cc with 78.9 brake horsepower. The Interceptor has a 6 speed box as does the T120 while the T100 has a 5 speed box. Weight wise the Interceptor is the lighter bike at 217 kilos. The T100 is 228 kilos and the T120 is 236 kilos. Reliability wise, well, engineering of the Triumph is technically more modern and advanced, but this does not always translate into reliability. Here I would say, quite controversially, they are both about the same. I've heard of faults on Triumphs and I've heard of faults on Royal Enfields. In fact, I'm afraid it's a bit of tit for tat. Now, I've never had a problem with my T120, but I know of others who have. While I also have regular subscribers with interceptors having trouble three 20,000 mile plus on them. I also have heard other people's with interceptors with minor gremlins from you. So, I can only comment on the statistics. The vast majority of both the Triumphs and the Royal Enfield Interceptors are reliably well engineered machines 
with great reliability. Now yes, service wise though is much greater than the Triumph being at 10,000 miles, while it's only 3,000 miles on the Interceptor. And on the Interceptor, every other service needs the valve timing adjusting. So let's sit on the bike. Well, weight wise, sat on the bike there's not an awful lot of difference between the T100 and the Interceptor. Both do feel very similar in as far as weight. And there is an 11 kilo difference between that of the Triumph and the Royal Enfield. Moving the bike around is more noticeable, but it's not massive. Now compare the Interceptor with the T120 and you will notice a big difference. There is a 19 kilo difference and that is evidence if you need to manually move that bike around. So sat on all three bikes, they do feel very similar. On all three bikes with my 30 inch leg I can put my feet firmly on the ground. So on the road. The Interceptor does feel the lighter bike. Now seating position, well it does feel roughly the same on all three bikes. Just an ever so slightly lean forward, but basically sat upright. It's comfortable. Now going along the Interceptor does feel the lightest, and for a novice rider or rider in their senior years it does feel more nimble. But only just. It's only just different than that T100. There's not a huge difference. But power wise, well it's noticeably different on the T100. The T100 has a notable surge in power over the Interceptor. But that's the difference in a 900cc bike compared with a 650. The T100 certainly has more go, while the T120, well, it is as expected. The T120 is vastly more powerful than the Interceptor. It has 32 brake horsepower more. Okay, it's heavier than the Interceptor, but the power certainly more than makes up for the weight difference. I like to refer to the T120 as being a gentleman's express. So, how does that translate on the road? Well, on a commute, in the town and the city, in busy traffic, well, you're not going to notice the difference very much between the Interceptor and the T100. The Interceptor is a very capable bike. Many say the 650 is a real sweet spot for many riders. It has enough power to be enjoyable while offering a great balance of power for everyday needs. And that's just how it translates on the Interceptor. The bike is nimble, it's agile and it's powerful enough to manage the traffic. It's a great all-rounder. It is a great bike to ride. Now the T100 again is a very agile and nimble bike. It will handle the traffic with ease. It's great on the A roads having a bit more power. The bike feels light. It's just as agile and nimble as the Interceptor with that bit more power. While the T120, well, it surprises me. Okay, it's not as agile as the Interceptor or the T100, but it handles the traffic well. It's very easy to handle despite the weight. It feels as well. It's okay on the corners. Okay, not as sure footed as the T100 or the Interceptor, but in the right hands, it's good. The strengths of the T120 are on the motorway. It will cruise along effortlessly at speed for long periods of time. It is a gentleman's cruiser. While I feel on the motorway, you will miss the six speed box on the T100. It's not drastic, especially for shorter hauls at 70 miles an hour, but I've extended right in the T120XLs. Now, the Interceptor does have the six speed box, but not the power of the T100 or the T120. That said, it's more than capable on the motorway. It's just not as effortless as the T120 or the T100. Wind resistance is noticeable on all three bikes at 70 miles an hour. Now back to those gearboxes again, well all feel very smooth, in fact to be honest there's no difference really apart from that T100 having one less gear. So again back on the road, what's the braking like? Well the brakes on all of them work really really well, it's to be expected because they all have Brembo brakes. So ok if I have to say which one would be best it's the T120 because it has twin disc Brembo's on the front and that have a noticeable stopping power over that of the T100 or the Interceptor. That said the single disc Brembo's on the T100 work adequately well as does the single disc on the Royal Enfield which is a cheaper Bybury disc made by Brembo. The T120 has switchable ABS and two rider modes, Rain and Road. The T100 has switchable ABS, while the Royal Enfield just has ABS. 
Now from new, I did find the T120 throttle twitchy and it lasted for about a thousand miles. I didn't find that on the T100 or the interceptor. Now suspension wise, well, they all feel about the same. If anything, I'd say the T120 is slightly softer on the rear. They all feel really comfortable and that's the strength of all these bikes. They are really comfortable bikes to ride. Okay, preload can be adjusted on the rear of the interceptor, the T100 and the T120, but I found the setup okay straight from the factory. On the bikes, I personally didn't feel it needed any more, but again, that's very much down to personal preference. Now, on a practical note, the interceptor retains a centre stand, which is useful for minor servicing and cleaning, while these are now extra on the T120 and the T100. So, Let's get back to that fit and finish. Well, like I've said, fit and finish is excellent on the interceptor and the Triumphs, but the extra quality of parts used is evident on the Triumph, even down to the switch gear and lighting. On the interceptor, it's very good. It just feels slightly better on the Triumph. The clocks also look nice on the Triumph, but again, the Royal Enfield twin clocks are more than adequate. I have to be honest, the Triumphs do have a bit more of quality feel about them, but again, they should they are much more expensive to buy and they are after all like I keep saying a premium brand. In the UK the Royal Enfield costs just over £6,000 depending on colours etc while the T100 costs over £9,000 and the T120 £11,000. You see the Royal Enfield Interceptor represents excellent value for money. The bike is exceptional for the price. That said, I also personally think the Triumphs, when comparing quality with its competitors like BMW for example, which are even more expensive, and on some of those Japanese brands like Kawasaki and Yamaha. But again, you do get an awful lot of motorcycle for your money with that Royal Enfield Interceptor. So how do they compare overall? If I were to categorise them, I would say styling wise, there's not a lot between them. It basically comes down to riding them. The Interceptor I would position as a benchmark. It has everything you really need from a modern classic motorcycle at a great price and it's a great all-rounder. So the T100 is if you want a bit more quality and power while retaining a bike that's nimble and agile. So basically it sits between. Now the T120 again is a step up. Again it has more power, a few more extras but there is a small sacrifice on it being not quite as nimble. It's not quite as agile as its sister the T100 or the Royal Enfield Interceptor, but again, it's only just. So something else to consider, it depends on budget and riding styles and what you want your bike for. For me, they are all excellent motorcycles. So there is no single winner here because we all have different demands and needs and one size never ever fits all. What suits me probably doesn't suit you and vice versa. So it all depends on your budget and riding styles and what you want the bike for. For me, they are all excellent motorcycles that actually complement each other well and I will be pleased to own any one of the three. So that's it from me. If you like this comparison, please consider subscribing to the channel. It does mean a lot to me to have you on board. If you like modern classic motorcycles or modern classic gear, this is the place to be. So until next time, stay safe, enjoy life, BFN, bye for now.